Welcome to another in the SMU video archive series in which we feature uh, individuals uh, who have made a, an important difference in the history of the university. And uh, they are all from the SMU community and all can provide insights into the history of, of SMU as we know it today, especially from the perspective of their time here at the university. My name is James Brooks and with us today is Sarah Chafardi, a former assistant dean to, in the Evening College the School of Continuing Education at SMU. Actually, Sarah, you held a number of titles and that what, was, uh, what I just said sort of consolidates yes. a number yes. of them. <laughs> Why don't we begin at the beginning and uh, tell me, a, refresh my memory a little bit on, on uh, your background when you first uh, came to the job uh, that, that uh, occupied much of your professional life. Yes. Well, that was a kind of a long uh, time ago I, uh, because I first started working at, at SMU uh, after I had left the university. And uh, I worked first with uh, Dr. Clough, who was the uh, director of the Dallas College program in the early days. And sometime, Dallas College was the the ancestor, so to speak, of the School of Continuing yes, Education. Yes, that's right. That was a long time ago. And uh, when so was that, Sarah? That was uh, that was in 1945, uh, uh, about. Right after World War II. Yes, that's right. And uh, so there there were many many students who had registered at the Evening College downtown, and uh, so uh, Dr. Clough uh, asked me to go downtown and work as one of the registrars uh, to help at registration at Dallas College downtown, so I did. And uh, then I found out that uh, since I was working uh, at a part of the university, I could take classes at a part of the university without having to pay anything. So that was mighty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I started on another <laughs> decade of going to school at SMU. and. Uh, uh, in uh, about 1948, I had worked for about eight years at uh, Dallas College downtown, and uh, I graduated with honors with from the BA degree and major in English, and uh, I was then asked to uh, to teach freshman English on the campus, and so uh, I gave up my registrar's job at Dallas College and came back out to the campus and. Uh, uh, did did some some, some English uh, programs for them, freshman English, and then after that, um, I went back downtown because uh, the the other registrar down there had had gone up to Northwestern to do some work, and so they asked if I wouldn't please go back and and you know take and another place yeah. downtown, which I did, and then. Uh, I heard from the English department that it, I wanted to get a master's degree, and they said, well, now if you'll come back out here, <laughs> you can get a master's degree, <laughs> and uh, it'll be an easier thing to do probably, uh, but if you need to take some classes downtown, you can, or to work downtown for a while, you can. So that's kind of what I did. I finally then uh, finished up, uh, well, I had, I had some other, Janet Bingner, another one of our administrators was there in the 60s yeah. and so. But anyway, I finally did um, get to graduate again <laughs> <laughs> with a master's degree uh, with a fellowship. Well, now, uh, am I correct uh, the so-called Dallas College, which was the name of the, what we now call the School of Continuing mm -hmm. Education, uh, that began in the mid-30s, did that? It started right? about, yes, it started about 1934, and uh, there were only about 372 students, but by the time of 1949, we had almost 3,000 students, yeah. and the men that came, had come back from the war, you know, the, yeah. the GI guys, they, they really, really did speed up our registrations. And I, I assume uh, that it was started in the mid-30s uh, in response to the Depression needs, at least in part. Yes, I think so. Uh, I know that uh, when we, we had, uh, the college had some, uh, pla some places all you know, on different places over town, some in Oak Cliff, and I remember when they opened the Oak Cliff uh, 
class, uh, um, Free Lee came out with Dr. Claw, mm -hmm. and they talked about what they wanted to do for the people in that area of the town. And then there was also a class uh, in Dallas College then from um, one of the churches in mm -hmm. Oak Cliff. So it really, in those early days, it, it was scattered. That's right. On several occasions. And it locations. had been in two YMCA's too. Uh huh. So there. But then, uh, really, the Dallas College that that I knew when I came, and the, that you have been talking about in terms mm -hmm. of your experience, mm -hmm. was located on Ackard. Yes, at, that's right. At Ross. Or no, it at was it San was Jacinto. San Jacinto. Uh huh. And right. what is now the Lincoln Building. That's right. Uh, well, the, now. Um, so after World War II, you had a lot of GIs who uh, returned from the war, in many cases with families to support, and uh, they needed a job, but that's they right. also needed to finish their education, yes, and so it, f it responded to that need. Yes, that's right, that's right. And and how long was uh, Clough, was he director or dean of Dallas College? He Well, he was the director of uh, Dallas College, but uh, he uh, resigned after about 14 years, and Dr. Clonch came along. John Clonch, John Clonch from yes. Political Science. Yes, that's right. He was a professor of government from SMU, and uh, uh, this this change uh, really uh, was a sort of a beginning of a lot of additional programs and new facilities. And uh, well, now on that same location, the original Dallas College building on that location, and that came to be uh, the principal focus of, of Dallas College that's right. courses. Right. Uh, that was an old building, and then that was torn down and replaced by the Easterwood building. Am I remembering um, correctly? Yes, that's right. Uh huh. And that right. was in the fif late fifties. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And you were there all of that while. I was there. Oh, yes, I was there. However, I did leave Dallas again <laughs> after I got my master's degree because I thought, well, I want to go teach something else, which was a mistake. I didn't like most of those little kids in West Texas. But anyway, <laughs> I did come back. <laughs> we may have to edit this tape, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I did did come back, and uh, then when I when I came back to uh, after after that, then I went back downtown. Uh, again. Well, tell me, tell us a little bit more about the range of, of subjects that was was taught down there. I know in the fifties I taught geology courses mm -hmm. down there. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, but uh, well, there, and there, I know there, chemistry was taught down there. Yes, chemistry, uh, psychology. Um, uh, there were uh, a lot of business management courses. There were courses that were taught uh, to some of the um, nurses in McKinney who uh, who were working for toward uh, t the war was still going on at that time and also at that same time actually even a little bit earlier uh, Methodist Hospital we had uh, some nurses programs in Met Methodist Hospital for, and, for in, yeah, in right. Uh -huh. yeah right and um, there were some evening classes that were in the pre-law program at Dallas College at night, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a very big evening class. Uh, then there was there were classes in education. There were classes in specialized. There were many classes that were good for some of the people who didn't necessarily start working for a degree, but were already working in different companies, mm -hmm. and like in an industrial engineering class, a specialized press class. And then uh, there were some other uh, classes that were that were taught by some of the people who um, a leadership training series to other Texas cities, Waxahachie, Ennis, Tyler, Wichita Falls, Beaumont, and Rotary Club had called them there part of the time. And uh, uh, Dr. Jack Strange was on this particular. Uh, one. Then head of psychology. Yeah, with Sterling Wheeler and Fred Fred Bryson went along with Sterling this Sterling Wheeler was a vice president for university relations. Yeah, right. And uh, A.Q. Sarton and Harold Weiss. So uh, we had a lot of different kind of, of professors, but all of our professors, all of our teachers uh, had either, you know, their teaching 
uh, time plus the this certificates, was, some certificates for other kinds of, of classes that we had there. There was an insurance property and casualty class, a transportation society in Dallas that Ward Watson taught. Uh, that was really interesting, and, and it was it was very it was. Uh, well, it was, it was just very diverse. It, was, it really was. <laughs> well, uh, the thing that that I remember most vividly in looking back at at uh, Dallas College and and continuing education is that I think over the years uh, that part of the university and numerically it's a significant part of the university uh, always tried to respond to. Uh, valid needs in the community. That's right. And so courses came and went depending on mm -hmm. what the needs yes, were right. of the community. And so it was a community service yes. in that way. That's right. And one one of the services I think was to the city of Dallas. They 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 brought us a lot of, of students like managers that yes. they that they wanted and you know different kinds of students that a lot of people had that also just come back from the war not mm -hmm. very long ago and needed to refresh some of their Right. Things, yeah. So and, that was a very that was really uh, important, I think. Well, now at at that time we're um, we're now still talking essentially in the fifties mm -hmm, in that period. Mm -hmm. We're uh, later and and now um, there are a lot of informal short courses given yes. uh, for really cultural enrichment. Mm -hmm. uh, were there many of those being given then? Uh, well, there weren't many given in the downtown area. But of course, uh, um, you know, Mary Miller uh, had that program and her program was much larger than ours in the sense of the people that were working really for, some of them for non-credit, but mostly for some credit courses yeah. to, to uh, and those, the, mm -hmm. and those, that was those the were really different. Of, uh -huh. And those, many of those were given on the campus. Yes, that's and, right. And uh, even though they were given in the evening, they were that's right. They it were on still, the campus. Yeah, it was still evening college. So we were we were kind of beginning to uh, develop a split personality. That's right. <laughs> and now uh, the Easter we referred to the Easterwood building. Mm -hmm. uh, when was that? The old building was torn down, and when one was the Easterwood building well, built? That was built with a private gift from the Easterwood yes, family. Yes, that's right. I, uh, let's see if I don't have the... Uh, Late 50s? Uh, well, no, the cornerstone of that building, the Easterwood building, was in 1959, yes. June of 1959. And uh, it, it was right at the corner of Ackard and Patterson Streets. Mm -hmm. Now, the, and the building was... Mu the facility was much, much better than the old building yes. that we had had. We had new houses, we had offices, we had libraries, we had a student's assembly room, we had a snack bar, <laughs> we had a lot of classrooms. Yeah. So that building was really a, a wonderful thing for us to have. And, uh, and that building was used until when? That built, well, the, that building was used until 1977 was when the um, was when the building was torn down. Um, yeah, and that uh, by that the Lincoln then, people, the, yes, the Lincoln properties mm -hmm, yeah. purchased purchased right. the the ground and, right. and tore the building down. But that period then, during the 60s and most of the 70s. Uh, you were still offering courses there and were offering, beginning to offer more and more courses on the campus in the evening too. Well, um, yes, some, but uh, I do think that maybe some of the student, uh, some of the some of the students, uh, did different kinds of things then maybe and uh -huh. were not there. There were still a lot of students that were wanting to, to, to work to get their degrees. Degree, yeah. And a lot of those people particularly did come to the campus for final reports as long as they could. Right. But it was a little difficult for some of those people to do that. Yes. Uh, so I think uh, that was one of the things that we did need to work on some to be sure that we were taking care of both both sides. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, now let's see. Uh, you mentioned uh, Dean, uh, 
Dr. Cl uh, Clough, who was director, and then uh, uh, Clanch, Dr. Clanch came in, and then right, and then it was Fred Bryson. I Fred believe, Bryson, the came next in. one, right? And uh, it was shortly thereafter, or during that period, kind of in the '70s, that uh, the sale Ch of the the land and therefore the Easterwood building drove the move of everything to the campus. It was very sad. <laughs> I, I know, it was It was it for was. you and it was sad for a lot right, of students. Yeah, that's right, right. And, but it was driven by the financial necessity yes. of, we couldn't afford downtown real estate was what it amounted to. Well, that's right, yes, that's right. And uh, it was also in part a, a reflection, I think, of the fact that um, a lot of the customers were moving north that, yes, that that's a fact. That is a fact. Richardson and, uh -huh. yeah, and right. Plano and so mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Well, now, uh, during that period of time, you were you worked with a, a lot of of SMU faculty and a lot of students. And before we we continue further in the continuing education, uh, the development of the School of Continuing Education, um, talk a little bit. Of, as you remember about some of the interesting faculty and and students that you dealt with and and uh, that that always lends a bit of texture well there there were so there were so many uh, interesting uh, people that we had as teachers that who had I think so many of those of those people who teachers who came from SMU at night to come at night really enjoyed their classes and uh, they were, um, I think they felt s something strongly about these people who were able to come in from work at night and, you know, and, and, and have some, have, have classes and so forth. So I think that they, that we had a very good faculty and um, of course a little bit later on some of the, I think some of the salaries at SMU maybe changed around a little bit and that sort of moved them away or something. But I, I, I'm just saying that, you know, they, but, but we, we did have a, a, a good faculty, I think. Well, I know a lot of the faculty from the then College of Arts and Sciences, uh, the senior and some of the junior faculty mm -hmm. taught there. I know, uh, I know this because he and I carpooled together. Ogden Bain, who was head of chemistry, yes. taught mm -hmm. in in Dallas yes. College. Yes, uh -huh. and uh, uh, there was someone from the School of Engineering. I don't that taught for us. Uh, um, I don't remember. Uh, and uh, the, but you had a lot of people, and you mentioned. Uh, Aaron Sarton, who mm -hmm. had been head of the Department of Psychology and yes. ultimately became dean of the School of Business, mm -hmm. uh, taught there. Jack Strange in yes. psychology mm -hmm. did uh, a, a large variety of. Yes. Of, mm -hmm. uh, we had people. some. We had someone from the art class uh, that uh, taught for us. I don't remember the name of that person. I just remember. Uh, that that was a very interesting class to look into the door of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't ask you to expand no, on that. <laughs> no, I can't do that. <laughs> uh, what about, uh, and, and when, now when did uh, Dr. Claunch retire as director of Dallas College? Well, let's see. Uh, he That was about the time the Easterwood transition took place, wasn't it? Yes, uh -huh, it was. It um, seems to me... I don't know, when he came back to the campus, he, I think he was, he was, Mary was working with him more uh -huh. when he came back to the campus after, uh, after Fred, Fred was not downtown too much. No, I think he came in probably in in the mid '60s there about. Yeah, right. Uh huh. Yeah, uh, that w was. But uh, I really, I really can't remember exactly when Dr. Clonch. Well, it it, left it really doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah, That's right. the succession. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, at, at about the time that the real estate values downtown were forcing us out of operating down there. Um, other things were going on on the campus, and um, 
decisions were made to group our various uh, activities, uh, adult education sorts of activities together in what we call, came to call the School of Continuing Education. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dallas College was a, an important, probably the important piece of that. Mm -hmm. And but that also included the informal short courses and so on. And you were you, you were then essentially in charge of the Dallas, whole Dallas College operation. Mm -hmm. And you were operating out of offices in the ground floor of Fondren Library, yes, as I that's recall. Right. Uh -huh. Well, talk about the change from coming from downtown <laughs> out to the campus, and, and just in terms of operating and all of that. Well, I think one of the things that. Uh, that was really hard to get accustomed to was that you didn't get to see as many of the students as you yeah. always did. Now, the students did come by into the basement of the, you know, where we were, were working, but so many of, of them, were, there, were, so there were more of them, I think, that actually uh, didn't come through our office so much, so mm -hmm. that that was a little bit of a, a big change. Yeah. But these students were still going to school and so forth. Sure. But uh, and obviously I, something you missed. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, but I think that they that they many of them were very excited to to come to the campus, and then to have you know to have uh, the opportunity to have a different kinds of things to do and see and and, and work on. Now, uh, in terms of earning degrees. Uh, was there anything, uh, any difference? Did the proximity of being on campus as opposed to being separated by a few miles, did that make much difference in the number of uh, evening I, I, kids who went know. ahead, not kids, but yeah, right. uh, students who went on for degrees? Do you have any feeling about well, that? Well, I never did. Uh, I, uh, I, I No, I think mostly I just felt like we didn't have quite as many students and uh, I really never did get to be a part of that so much, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the ones that, that were really worker bees, you know, they, if they were getting ready to get a, a diploma, <laughs> they came by. <laughs> <laughs> and they were very, you know, we, were, we could be very happy together to know that they had done all this work. And it was a change for them, really. Sure. Uh, in, in, the, in the kind of, uh, it was a good change, but it was something that they had to get used to and then I had to get used to it. <laughs> but we did really make it. <laughs> you did in, in great style. And yes. uh, those, those uh, activities continue today and, yes, and are right. still an important piece of the yes. university's uh, offering. And, right. and uh, because they're in the evening and they're a little uh, less traditional, they probably, in my view, have, have never been as uh, recognized as they should have been. No, and I, I think that uh, as, as things uh, have changed, I do think that uh, that kind of a program at night, you know, it, it's, it is a legacy. I mean, it's yeah. just it's wonderful. It's yeah. wonderful. And uh, now when the School of Continuing Education came along, uh, and you're going to have to really help me here because my memory is not sharp on this. Uh, there was the, the Dallas College. Was it still called Dallas College when it moved out to the campus, when you all moved out to the campus? I think it was just called Continuing Education, yeah. probably. And, and then there was the informal short course piece that Mary Miller had yeah, right. started, mm -hmm. and, yes. and, and both of those pieces were under Fred Bryson mm -hmm. as, as Dean of Continuing Education. That's right. What, uh, were there any other uh, components that fitted under that umbrella that you recall? Those were certainly the two principal ones. Yes, that's right. Um, Ultimately, later the MLA came in there. All right, I think yes, that's what I think that's what I was thinking about because the office we had downstairs, the uh, evening college or continuing education office, like was over on this side of the building, and then there was another part of that basement. Yes, 
that somebody else was working in, and I can't remember who it was, but I think it was the MLA. Master of Liberal Arts. Yeah, right. And then later on, when uh, it, they grew up a little bit more and it got crowded, I, then they moved upstairs mm -hmm. to the first floor of the uh, library. Uh -huh. I think that's what happened then, because I think that's the way it, you know, it was. And, and it was closer to where, where Dr. Bryson's office was also. The, the MLA program, I think, and I may be wrong on this, but mm -hmm. I think that was something that, that Dr. Bryson started. Yes, I think so. So there were really those three pieces mm -hmm. uh, and all under the umbrella of continuing education. Yes. And the MLA, of course, leads to a degree, but a non-traditional degree in the sense mm -hmm. that it is really a, a broadening degree rather than a, a, a uh, professional track yes. degree, if yeah, I can use right. that terminology. Uh, now, what about what about relations with the degree granting schools? I know you, we, in talking about this, you told me that you had law courses that were offered uh, through Dallas College, uh, or at least pre-law well, courses. Well, no, yes, yes and no, but, but what, was, what was happening, uh, we did have students who were planning to get a degree in law from SMU mm -hmm. and they were going to evening college <clears throat> downtown uh, evening college right I don't remember who the teacher was that was teaching them or what kind well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about that particular program but I know that then when the evening college classes that were here on campus and I'm not sure that we maybe even call them evening college but I think we did but anyway when that often when that when that just kind of shut down for a while for other reasons that the school of law was busy with uh, you know that was I don't I really don't don't know what happened to those students well now what happened did, did you have similar rela relationships with uh, other professional schools like business or engineering well yes 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 and no <laughs> and, and ultimately then uh, I, I know in the School of Business they took over essentially all of their degree programs yes uh, they, they did they also took they were they decided they wanted to pull out yeah from downtown uh, and we and we did, of course, we did lose some students that yes. way. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that that then moved. I'm I'm trying to kind of paint a picture of what happened with the evening courses the, that uh, students took after work hours, and um, so they they the law degree the law students were essentially in the school of law up until mm. the mm -hmm. time they decided yes. that they were, were would not continue right. evening college mm -hmm. and similarly uh, with the business school that's right a lot of a lot of the faculty from the business school uh, just d decided they did not want to teach downtown mm -hmm. now, I don't know why uh, but those, well, those you know, programs are all consolidated right. here on the campus. <laughs> right. What about engineering? Uh, well, uh, there was only one engineering course, I think, that, we, that was taught downtown. Um, I think two different teachers alternated teaching it sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really don't know <coughs> what happened to them. Well, uh, I, I suspect that, that it went the way of the other professional schools that it was pulled in under. Yeah, was that the time that the School of Engineering on campus was kind of going downwards anyway? Well, Wasn't there a problem in there a little bit or just a, maybe just a change of people? I think just, people, a, change just a change of leadership. Just a change of leadership, Yes, right. because uh, in the mid-60s, um, there was the beginning of a considerable, this has followed the university master plan of mm -hmm. the early 60s. Uh, a strong effort made on the part of the university administration to uh, strengthen the School of Engineering. Dean Martin was brought yes. in, mm -hmm. and uh, then shortly thereafter, the School of Business came along, and Dean Grayson was brought in. Mm -hmm. And I think they probably wanted to consolidate all of their programs under their direct control, mm -hmm. and, oh. and consequently, uh, they they no longer were offered 
through Dallas College. Yeah, they right. were offered That's right. on the campus directly. Um, now, uh, I realize that, that you didn't have a direct relationship with the, the informal short courses, uh, but you were working closely with, with them. Yes. Talk a little bit about that to the extent that you're comfortable in talking about it. That represented a wide array of courses. Well, um, now you're talking about the ones now that... Uh, the non-credit courses. The non-credit courses that... Were uh, cultu really cultural enrichment courses. Right. That Mary Miller really right. got started. Uh, now, are, are, are you thinking of these as a part of Mary's continuing education part? Because I don't think I had a continuing education no. part then, except that I did help Mary, when, you know, yes. well, far as No, I'm, I'm really just right. interested in getting a little bit of a feel for the record uh, of what, what, what some of those were like and what oh, courses well, were offered and, and well, so on. I'll because tell that's, you, a, that's another piece. I'll tell piece. you some of the ones that, that I liked. Uh, one of them was took a bunch of people to Paris, uh, France. <laughs> yes, not Texas. <laughs> no, no, no. We went to Paris, and uh, Mary gave me a list of those people, and she said, "Now you're in, you're responsible for them. You take care of them on the airplane, and off the airplane, and <laughs> up the river, and down the river." And so that was a wonderful, wonderful program. It was a week's program, and it was fantastic. It was fantastic. And that was focused on teacher. art, I'm sure. Yes. And then um, one of the programs that uh, I helped Mary with was a program to Big Bend. Yes. And that was also really a good, Mary knew how to put programs on. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> she was a wonderful person. She did so much for me. and. Uh, we we did uh, so much together. Yeah. Well, I knew you had, and that, yeah. that's the reason I wanted you, wanted to talk a little bit about it. Yeah. What, what are some of the other courses that came along in the MLA uh, thing that was going on in parallel with your uh, Dallas College? Uh, it seems to me that uh, there were uh, lots of uh, courses in art history and literature. Well, and, uh, Yes, but there, I don't think there were very, I don't think there were very many of those from the students that had been in the downtown mm -hmm. Dallas College. I don't think there had been very many when those students moved to the campus. I, well, I was thinking more the, the new pool of students that the MLA, not sorry, the, the uh, informal short courses brought in. The, uh, well, uh, yes. they. Because that was a, that but, but was a group I, of people that were not necessarily going to take a course for credit. But they they just wanted to take right. it for their well, own pleasure. Yes, but now the the thing about that I think is, like I I took a lot of those courses myself, but uh, I didn't have anything to do with them. I mean, except Mary said, "Go register for that <laughs> one," <laughs> and then take them to Paris. <laughs> well, but uh, but but I didn't really. Uh, that was, uh, uh, well, I did, t you know, take a lot of the courses, and they were certainly good, and, and I know everybody enjoyed them, but it was not, it, you know, it wasn't like, it was, it was different from... Oh, <laughs> sure, and I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to draw a direct comparison <laughs> no. with, with right. the four-credit courses mm -hmm. you were offering, yeah. but the, those courses were an important addition to what we offered for the community. Yes, absolutely. And that I was just yes. trying to get you to That's talk right. a, a little bit were, about the, you know, all, what they were like. There were all kinds of courses. I remember uh, there was one that, uh, that I, a friend and I, and I went to, to see about stocks and bonds, which yes. we knew nothing about. We didn't even know what they were all talking about. It was nice. We looked around to see everybody, and then we left, and we decided we didn't need to come back because we didn't know a thing they were telling us to do. They so anyway, that was the class we had. <laughs> that was, there were probably a bunch of people in there looking for stock tips. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so there, there, was, there certainly was a variety of courses. There yeah. really were. And there were a lot of courses of uh, historical courses, uh, you know, like things from down south and just all sorts of, of courses that yeah. were, I think, always as important uh, as the other courses, because 
in in the sense of what they were doing the, in a different what way. What their purpose what was. What the purpose was. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So I don't think that there was anything that needed to be torn up from that. And I don't think it has been. I think it's just gotten better and better and better. Well, it, they they offer a wide variety of very interesting subjects. I get the catalog yeah, that's and right. wish I had time to go oh, take yeah, them all. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then <coughs> Fred Bryson came along. Uh, he was already, uh, I guess, Dallas College reported to Fred uh, yes. after Claunch retired. Right. And then Fred, at some time <coughs> along about the late 60s or early 70s, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Fred got the Master of Liberal Arts program started. Yes, and that was good, a good and, program. And that catered to um, somewhat the same audience as the informal short courses, in the sense that these were people who weren't uh, didn't need a professional yeah, degree. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh, yeah. And on the other hand, they did earn a degree, and they mm -hmm. had to take exams. And, yes, and, yes. Uh, so it was kind of between the Dallas College kind of experience <laughs> and the and the informal short course, except well, it did lead to a, yes, the MLA, and that is right. still a successful ongoing program. Well, you know, if uh, if our whole group could just keep bringing in the different kinds of people that was better than ever better than anything right. <laughs> and looked at crassly from the point of view of the administration that money appeared in the bottom line yep. along with the tuition paying students on that's right day students <laughs> that's right so uh, well we, we've talked <coughs> this has been an interesting kind of retracing of, yes, of the university's contributions in that area mm -hmm. of uh, adult unfortunately uh, not an attractive term particularly but adult education no but you know that i think that uh, anytime you use a s words like that it's important yeah i think so too uh you you uh and let's see then uh, dr bryson retired and <coughs> mary became dean of the School of Continuing, edu Continuing Education for a while, did mm -hmm, she not? Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, then she retired and uh, Bob Patterson came in shortly, if not immediately. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that's the succession yeah, of, right. of leadership. Uh -huh. yeah. And you played, <laughs> You 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 <laughs> you had a lot of different I associates did some other of things. <laughs> well, talk about those a little bit. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the things that well, I went to the office of admissions and worked worked with them for a while, uh -huh. and uh, the it was very interesting to me because I also uh, it was my duty to take care of the foreign students to look at their transcripts to take them in to talk to their families that was fantastic sure very different but very interesting because i loved i loved foreign students and it was just really something that was just really really interesting and helpful we had some unusual people who came in and who left out but <laughs> and then who the rest came back wonderfully <laughs> Well, that must have been a challenge because you had, uh, oh, in addition to everything new. else, you had culture and language it, to cope That's with. right. It was brand new, but then I, I, I did, I do like foreign languages, and I do like, uh, I was, I, I liked to, to be with that. Uh -huh. I liked that. So that was, you, you took that on after you left Dallas College, yeah, per right. se, or uh -huh, continuing yeah, education. Right. Uh -huh. uh, well, you, you suggested that there might have been some other interesting experiences you had. What? Oh, well, let me see what else happened. Well, of course, backing up there in the middle of, uh, after my master's degree, I, I left it, left Dallas again. I had to get away from this. I'd been going to school at SMU for years. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want one more class. <laughs> and so I did, I, it was interesting to me that uh, I did uh, go to Midland uh, and uh, teach uh, high school. I'd never taught students before, but I have the students that I taught at SMU were grown people, yeah. you know, and I realized, who are these people? Who are these little things, you know? <laughs> I, you know, but anyway, so Midland was, was great, and then I decided, well, I really need to get back to some sort of college work and get these grown people going again. So I got a job over at Howard County Junior College, which was in Big Spring, 
Now that was really fun. I mean, talk about teaching those cowboys, and they <laughs> loved it. I mean, they really just wanted to learn it. And I, tr I was teaching drama classes. That was very interesting. <laughs> Shakespeare and Big Spring. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes alive. Well, anyway, and so then, uh, by that time I had gotten married, so we moved back to Dallas, and uh, I uh, started teaching at Hockaday. And, uh, that was interesting to me because when I was coming out of high school, I was offered a, a, a class that I could come and take uh, classes at Hockaday. I could be a Hockaday girl. Well, I didn't like that. Think I was going to like that too much. But anyway, I thought it was interesting that here again, I ended up, I always end up somewhere. <laughs> I ended up teaching Hockaday, and that was very, very delightful. And uh, then now this after, was after that, you yeah, came back to right. And then, and then that was when after that, after teaching at Hockaday, that's when Dr. Clough called, and I mean Dr. Clunch called. Do we? Oh yeah, we're backed up. Dr. Clunch called me and asked me, well actually I had left Hockaday and had gone to Pleasant Grove, mm -hmm. a brand new school. Oh boy, I was back to the little kids again. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway, and so. Uh, a little, little different from the Hockaday. That's right. So anyway, he, he just happened to, to call me one day and ask me if uh, I could possibly come and <coughs> work as a registrar that they didn't have anybody there and they really needed somebody and I said don't worry about paying me I'll be there in the morning I don't so care that just let me in the door Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that was your return to SMU <laughs> so there I'm back again <laughs> <laughs> well that that that's it, interesting it's and really quite, strange. An, quite an odyssey I know it it's really strange I didn't it isn't strange mean it's to just be interesting. like that <laughs> Well, I don't think most of no. us uh, really have that, ultimately, that much control in what happens. You respond to so. opportunities as they come yeah, along and, that's right. and think yeah. about how they relate to your interests and yeah. abilities. Uh, what about, uh, you, you commented about uh, Dr. Clough and to some extent Dr. Clonch. Uh, I, I think it's always interesting to talk uh, about people, and uh, I never knew Clough. I knew uh, Clonch very well, and I knew Bryson and, and Mary Miller mm -hmm. very well. Uh, quite uh, different styles. Dr. Clough was just a, just the sweetest, sweetest old man. And he used to, and uh, I, uh, well, anyway, when I got started working in his office, um, he would have on his desk papers lined up to hear, and he would ask, he would tell me to come and get a paper, you know, something, and I couldn't find it, and I couldn't find it, and he said, oh, don't worry about it. He said, you know, it's never lost, it's just here, you yeah. know, don't worry about <laughs> it. So, he, and he was just such a sweet old man. And I know when when he decided to well he had re, he had uh, taught he had taught school uh, some schools down in Tyler and all around in different places in Texas when he was a young man, and um, so when when he decided that he would 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 uh, you know retire, uh, everybody in the school downtown liked him and he was he was so nice and he was very good with the students. And uh, they gave him a gold watch with an engraving on it, and that was a, took. And then he had this this uh, uh, I won't not call it a party, but anyway, when the, the, the a day reception. the reception right, right across the street in the Baptist church, they let us use that part to have the. And an, another thing uh, that I thought was turned out to be kind of interesting later, um, when we had this thing about the the. Uh, cornerstone, uh, one of, let's see, one of Dr. C Dr. Clunch had a daughter, I think, and a, and a son that lived in Dallas. And, one, and I believe it was the, it was the s son that came to, to the cornerstone 
when they were tearing it down, and that was his For the name Easter, is Bob Easterwood Clough building. or something. Is yeah. that a name? I, it was I somebody don't know. that had come that had been at SMU and ever, but and we were, we, but he never did. He wasn't very. He just came and you know he didn't seem to want to get in, you know, to get involved or anything with that, but. Uh, but that was the but anyway, cornerstone yeah. for the Easterwood yeah, building. Yeah, that's right, yeah. when they laid it down. Uh -huh. And when they took you back up, there was a, really a good story uh, what, from me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were telling me a little bit that, that, that they, they lost the cornerstone, so to speak. They did, they did. See, is it, as it happened when the Easterwood building was built, it just happened that this was one of the times that I was coming through Dallas from some of my expeditions. And so, I uh, worked. In, I, I worked, started to work in the new Easterwood building. The day that they put the cornerstone in for the brand new building, so I knew what was in there, and I knew where the where the cornerstone was, and the Lincoln people couldn't find the cornerstone. Because they, it was to be I don't preserved. Know. It was to be preserved. It was to be preserved again. Yeah. And so uh, uh, some auditor or somebody, well anyway, so anyway, I went, so when they, were, when they were going to tear up the building, I went back down to see the cornerstone coming back up. Well, those men were down there with hammers and things and things and beating on the door. And, and they were way over here on this side of the door. And I said, it's not over there. And they said, this is where they've told us to tear it down. This is where we're tearing it down. So everybody just stood, 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 went on for hours. <laughs> and, so I, and so I said, uh, <clears throat> it's right over there. I'm telling you, I, the day it was laid, I was here in this building. It's right there. Well, they didn't like me telling them that. But finally, they got so disgusted and so upset and so, uh, you know, <laughs> they said, okay, let's just tear a hole over there and see. Well, the first chunk that they tore down, there it was, right there with the same old stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> so you were right all along and they finally had to admit it. That's right. And they had my name in the paper that I was the <laughs> one that <laughs> tore right. down the cornerstone. <laughs> that, that Located the, the, the right. vanished cornerstone. <laughs> and it, but it was very interesting. It really was. They had a Bible inside and they had some catalogs of our courses. They had newspapers and then they had a, uh, a biographical uh, little thing about the Easterwood people. Mm -hmm. And we were always hoping that Mrs. Easterwood would come down and see the building, just a, you know. Sure. But, but she, she never, I think she came maybe one time at Christmas. She was not. Very well. Yeah, I was going to say right, I had the impression yeah. she had health problems. Yeah, right. And, and but uh, we so we finally, uh, you know, we found that 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 was my great, my really great thing I did for the university. <laughs> <laughs> well, those things are very important, Sarah. Uh, well, what um, uh, you obviously were very fond of and admired, Dr. Clough. Um, Working with Dr. Clunch, uh, John always impressed me as as just really all constantly on the go. Kind of a, I don't want to say fly by night, but no. I, but that you're right. He he didn't come, you know. That was one of the things that really I was I I wished had been a little bit different. Uh, Dr. Clough. Uh, you know, he, he wasn't there very long because he retired pretty much after mm -hmm. we got to going. But Dr. Clunch really was not downtown, I didn't think, enough mm -hmm. to see what we were doing and for us to tell him, well, not what he was doing, but anyway. Well, to, and, you know, so right. he would know your so hands-on right, problems. So, right. And, uh, and of course now when, when Fred came along, Fred was good at coming downtown, but he was really busy with some other things and yeah. we knew that he was busy with other, other things. Because and so, he still was yeah. uh, overlapping with the Dean of Students. Yeah, that's right. Business. But so I, that was one of the things that I think um, that you know you, you need to really have a full force of people. It yeah. doesn't mean you have to be there night and day. But. Always, but uh, that, but Dr. Clunch, uh, he was he was always nice when he came down to see us, and you know he was a good guy. Mrs. Clunch was really nice and so forth. But uh, and he um, he you know he Mary and I worked 
together with him. And, you know, it all went off, but. <laughs> well, uh, I, of course, I worked really more closely with, with Bryson as uh, uh, he was a dean when I was, was in the provost's office. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always thought Fred had an uncanny skill at dealing with people. He did. And uh, he, he just uh, you, he you, had a very good, very good uh, political skills. He always called me Sarah Lee, you know, like the bread maker. <laughs> and every time I would fear, come, come here, Sarah Lee. <laughs> oh, it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he taught school in uh, Peru. Is that right? Uh-huh, at, at the university there, and that's where my husband was born in Peru. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's right. I had forgotten that, that yeah. Fred had that, mm -hmm. and that, and so he was actually uh, occasionally taught in the Spanish department, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And uh, uh, he was, uh, I don't know whether he was ordained or not, but he was very active oh, as a oh, lay he minister. he was, he was. We had... In the Presbyterian Church, yes, Cumberland Pres Presbyterian Church, yeah, down in Oak Oak o Ovilla. Ovilla, yes, we had somebody had a big, big, big party for him one time. I think it was when he was maybe the you know twentieth year he'd been ordained or something, and he and everybody down there in, in that little town just loved him a lot. Well, it, it was always interesting to me uh, because he. Uh, this, when he was dean of students, uh, of course, he was very much involved, and he was apparently very effective with students because students like John Hill and people, uh, students of that vintage, mm -hmm. really just were very, very high on, yeah, on thread. Right. Yeah, right. And uh, he would really try to help you if he could. He really yeah. would. He didn't. He didn't forget what he was supposed to do or anything. He really just took it to as high as he could. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and Mary Miller, uh, the the last continuing education dean with whom you worked, mm -hmm. uh, she you've already alluded to her uh, her skills at putting programs together, and right. she was almost without peer in in That's that. Right. She yeah. was really very good, and. Um, what uh, did did she take much interest in the in the Dallas College kind of courses, the adult courses uh, for credit? She was more involved with the informal courses. She was more involved, yes, with the informal courses. But uh, if there was any question or any special thing or something, you could always go and ask Mary. And she, I mean, she was always interested in in what was going on here, even though her main thing was here. You know, yes. she 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 was well into all, everything. Well, my impression of Mary was that, that she was a great problem solver. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you could tell Mary, well, you know, I think there's a problem in this area and mm -hmm. let's go find out about it and then figure out what to do. And she'd, not, she'd go find out about it and come back with a solution. She wouldn't that's bring right. the problem yeah, back that's to right. you. That's right, that's mm right. -hmm. And uh, I appreciated and admired Mary a great deal. And she was a wonderful person. Yes, she mm -hmm. was, and, and really, I think, contributed. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody in the continuing education field has contributed a well, great deal to the university. Yeah. We, we traveled some together to some of the uh, uh, programs uh, uh, that, that the uh, continuing education people had all over the country. And uh, we, we met a lot of nice people and talked about how they did their programs and so forth. I remember we went to Cincinnati and then up to, I think, to Chicago one time for a meeting. And Mary was always just really, you know, right, ready. To, oh, we went to, Cent we went to, we went out to uh, Utah one time. That was a scream. <laughs> <laughs> Would she, did she take on the Mormon church or something? <laughs> we had to drink Kool-Aid at the, at, the, at the big... Reception? Reception. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure so Mary we, had a we, few choice things to say right. about well, that. I mean, we were always ready to be whatever was going to happen. We were there. <laughs> well, she, uh, she, was, uh, she was a lot of fun to work mm -hmm. with. And one thing that Mary did that I'm sure you know a great deal about uh, she was key in resurrecting the old community course, which is now the Tate Lecture Series. Yes. And we asked her to, to do that because it had fallen by the wayside for political mm -hmm. reasons that yeah. we don't need to go into here. Yeah. Uh, 
but she came in, and I don't know whether you were involved with that very much at all, but you probably knew about it because you were close yes. to Mary. Uh -huh. But she did a great job, and yes. you know she was shepherding around people like Henry Kissinger and so on with That's her right. usual That's right. aplomb. That's right. That's right. And so uh, the, I, I always thought that that uh, Mary has never received the credit that she was entitled to because that core, that program, as it is launched now, the Tate Lecture Program, is really uh, attributable to Mary That's more than right. to anybody else. You're absolutely right about that. And uh, she brought Bill Lively in, and Bill mm -hmm. took it after Mary That's right. retired. That's right. But she was the one who had the pizzazz to get it started. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so. Well, there was a little little problem in there, and she, you know, she, I, I'm, I'm with you. I think she, she needed more credit. Well, than she I've, got. I've always felt strongly about that. Yeah. Uh, well, we're getting close to the to the end of our conversation, Sarah. I appreciate very much your coming in, and, and you've obviously dredged up a lot of uh, information <laughs> from the past, and that ought to be in the archives. Well, I, I, I should <laughs> should tell you that's a plug for the archives. <laughs> but uh, it it's been uh, it's, as I said at the beginning, it's I've felt for a long time that this dimension of the this facet of the university. Uh, has never been as fully uh, understood or in some cases appreciated as it should be because I think that's, it's contributed a lot. Yes, that's right. Well, of course, there were a lot of things going on at the university and, uh, you know, we were the, even the big university was getting, you know, so. Well, but uh, but I, I'm glad that, that we have been able to talk a little bit about Dallas College because that's, you know, that's my life. <laughs> well, of course. Well, uh, uh, are there any other things that, that we haven't covered that, that you would like to have on, on the record that will end no, up in the archives? No, not anything ending up in the archives. Well, but I mean I just... <laughs> but well, you know, we had, we had some very good young men at SMU, I mean at, at Dallas College that, that uh, turned out uh, had gone to school downtown and turned out to really big businessmen when when everything came well, along. You know. I have some names here, but I thought, well, geez, I better not have those names because well, sure, well I ahead. don't know. Well, they they might not even, <laughs> even want me to have their names. But I mean, we just had a lot of different kind of students and wonderful students, and. Uh, you know, I think do think they de deserve to have some credit. Well, I think uh, I, I know personally, and I won't mention names because I, I'm going from memory rather than from the record, but people who have uh, come to occupy quite high positions in banks and, and, right. and major businesses in Dallas mm -hmm. at one time or another have, have either taken a whole program or occasional courses in Dallas College or in some mm -hmm. cases, yeah. uh, the executive MBA program, yes. which was never your mm -hmm, baby, right. but but it uh, it was a, a, a kindred yes, kind of piece, of uh -huh. and and consequently, uh, you know that deserves a lot of credit. And a university in a major metropolitan area as SMU is really, I think, has to be sensitive to those things. And mm -hmm. I think maybe the community has not always realized fully uh, what a contribution. SMU has tried to make over the years in that area. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. And it's thanks to people like you that, that because you, you, this was, was something you really believed in and cared about and yes. you put up with all of the, the guff well, was, that, that you got from, out all the time. <laughs> the guff that you got from various administrators including me <laughs> over oh, well, the years. You know. <laughs> and uh, so I think that uh, I think we, we owe you a, a large debt of gratitude well, and, see that, and I, a lot of people yeah. uh, feel that way. Well, I, and, uh, that's very nice. So the, the saga of, of Dallas College from the mid-30s to uh, the uh, 70s, to the, to the <laughs> 70s, well and on beyond really has been a much credit and of course the legacy thing has come along mm -hmm, more recently yes. with, with all of those programs. and. Uh, so I think uh, we're about at the end of our rope, and I want to thank you very much, Sarah. It's well, been a pleasure for me. Well, thank you so much, too. It's been, it has been a pleasure for me, too. <laughs> Good. <laughs>